Okay, we're going to get started. It's 11. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to wait for a quick moment to have some of our speakers join us on screen. While we're waiting, I wanted to let you know this will be recorded and we'll be sharing the recording with you later. And also just so we know that people, as we're waiting for folks to join, if you're able to put your name, your organization, or where you're coming from in the chat, um, that'd be great so we can see who's with us on this panel, on this webinar today. We'll wait just maybe one more minute for a couple more folks to join. We'll keep checking the chat. Hi, Yvonne, thanks for joining us. Hi, Della. Hi, Chloe. Glad you could join us. Hi, Sarah. Hello, Casey, Alice. Wow, everyone's responding. Great. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> Everyone can hear us. We know that people are still going to be joining us as we go, but I don't want to take up too much time, so I'll get us started. Hi, everyone. My name is Peyan Yi. I am Senior Manager of Communications and Events at Asian Pacific Fund. I wanted to start off first by introducing you to the rest of the Give May team, beginning with our campaign co-host, AAPI Data. That'd be perfect. <laughs> Sorry, folks, my tech just all of a sudden was like glitchy on me. Thank you so much, Peyan. Uh, and thank you everyone for um, joining us. And from the, from the names of the organizations that I see in the chat, uh, many of you have been part of uh, Given May from the very beginning. And some folks are new uh, to, um, to what we're doing here. Just really um, honored to have kicked this off. Uh, and now that we're in our third year um, with the Asian Pacific Fund and Peyan especially, uh, thanks to not only your leadership, but all of the assistance you've provided along the way um, in, in growing uh, this, this movement, really. Um, I still find whenever we do this, their organization, and I, as someone who chairs the California Commission on API Affairs, run API data, feel pretty abreast and aware of what's going on in our communities. Every year, I'm pleasantly surprised by organizations that I have not uh, known before that are doing such amazing work. Um, and so I would say in addition to all the ways that we grow grassroots philanthropy, um, in my mind, it's, it's also just, um, just holding up uh, the amazing work that's happening and hopefully other funders also get to pay notice, right? In addition to the individual donors uh, in terms of the uh, amazing work you all do. So thank you uh, again for your interest, either if you're a first time organization or a returning organization uh, in this work. Um, thank you so much. Back to you, Peo. Thanks, Karthik. And then I would like to have our partners at Mighty Cause introduce themselves. Oh. I'm muted. So hello, I'm Sarah. Um, I am a project manager with Give and May. Um, and I am working with uh, Mighty Cause and we do all of kind of like the support for you all. Um, and we help kind of just pretty much run the platform that you all are working on um, with all of your awesome organizations. And Dawn is here as well. Hi, I'm Dawn. I'm supporting Sarah as she supports you. So we're very excited that everyone's on and participating and we cannot wait to see how you all do this year. I know it will be amazing. Thanks, Sarah and Don. And I also want to quickly introduce our panelists. We have Audrey Cha, who is the Development Associate at Coalition of Asian American Leaders. We have Samira Mia, who is the Development Manager at Womankind, and Pearl Lee, who's Grants Manager in Northeast Medical Services. We'll be hearing from them a little bit later today. Um, but before we jump into the content, I wanted to provide a quick overview of our campaign and some updates. Um, as Karthik mentioned, this is the third year we are hosting Give in May, and it's been so great to see how it's grown. And we're hoping that all of you can join us to make it even bigger and better um, than it was last year. The campaign will kick off at 12 midnight Pacific time on May 1st, and then end at 11.59 p.m. Pacific on May 31st. And as you see, registration is required to participate. So if you haven't registered yet, please do so soon. Even if you've participated in the past, you'll still need to register to be part of this year's campaign. And the deadline is Wednesday, April 20th. 
Um, some new updates. If you've noticed on the logo on the slide, we are now recognizing May as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. You can download these new logos in our shareable folders in the updated toolkit. Also, when you start posting about this on social media, we ask if you could use the hashtag given May and or hashtag AAPIHM, because then those posts will be able to show up on the social media feed on our campaign website. Um, the other new thing is aside from credit card fees this year, platform fees will also be deducted from donations. Donors will have the option to cover these fees and in our experience, a large percentage of them do so that you'll still be able to receive 100% of the donated amount. Um, and then on a piece of good news, in case you missed it on the email on Tuesday, we've been able to secure $200,000 for our Given May Awards, thanks to the generosity of Dutch Brothers Foundation and the Wallace H. Coulter Foundation. For the Coulter Foundation sponsorship, it's actually for a brand new challenge. So we're gonna be sharing some award details hopefully soon to tell you about all the different contests we'll be holding, how organizations will be grouped, and also what the award amounts will be. And then lastly, is a bit of housekeeping, this webinar is for you. We're open to all the questions, so please submit your questions through the question box or through the chat, and we'll try to do our best to answer as many as we can. Um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we are recording this webinar, so we'll also share the link to the video and upload it to the campaign site. And so with that, I would like to hand it over to Sarah at Mighty Cause. Awesome. Okay, cool. So um, for my segment, I'm pretty much going to talk to you all about um, the Mighty Cause platform and the functionality that we have for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for you all, um, and really just how you can really elevate your campaign um, and just really reach out to all of the supporters that you have for your organization. Um, and what we're going to really talk about is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So what is it? Um, why should you use it? How, uh, who should, let me minimize this, um, who should do it? And how do you set up your ambassadors for success? Uh, okay, so pretty much if you're new to peer-to-peer -to -peer fundraising, um, pretty much it refers to any fundraising pages that were not created by an admin of your organization. Um, and that means people that, you know, you might have donors that come to you and you're asking those donors to then reach out to their community members. Um, so these are your ambassadors. These are people in your inner circle who are super engaged, your board members, volunteers, um, people who work at your organization. Um, and how are you gonna engage them? You're reaching out to them, asking them to pretty much set up a page um, to help kind of advocate for your event um, on given May. Um, so these are really important because it's a really great way to cultivate those who are really care about your organization, um, kind of share their personal stories, what it is that they love about you and why they want to encourage like their friends and their mentors, their family members to donate to your organization on given May. Um, so you can see on this little cute little graphic, uh, these are your typical donors, typical kind of traditional donating fundraising, you're able to reach only so far. But if you implement peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, all of those little hearts that love you are then able to reach out to their connected hearts and you're just, you know, you're getting even more donors, um, which is really good because that helps you raise more money for your cause and really climb the leaderboards on the day of the event. Um, to kind of talk to you a little bit about peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, I uh, already kind of addressed like who you would be asking, kind of your board members, volunteers, staff, um, and you can provide the resources and the tips and on the Mighty Cause platform, we have it so that you can create a template that you can share with people. Um, and I'll show you in a couple slides. Um, but pretty much this is just a way to kind of just really help your kind of strategy blossom. Um, and all these funds are directly sent to your organization. They are not competing with your kind of program. They're working in tandem with it, which is really nice. Um, which is, I mean, which is what you want to do. You want to extend the reach of your organization. Um, so super quickly, I want to kind of cover the functionality that the Mighty Cause platform has for you all. And this pretty much means like you can create a template, which is really great. So when you log into your account, you're going to go to the side panel and it's going to say fundraising tools right here. You can click it and you can start editing your fundraiser templates. Um, and it just makes it really accessible to your supporters. Well, at the end of the day, you really want your peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, 
fundraisers to be able to kind of quickly help you in an easy way, in a fun way. They can tell their own story, but before they do that, you can make it super quick. You can edit, you can add a placeholder image, you can edit a goal that you think a fundraiser could be able to raise for you. You can edit your story. Um, it's super easy. We want it to be easy for you all. Of course, if you need help, you can always reach out to our support team as well. Um, and then to kind of elevate it, if you're like, we've done peer to peer before, what's next? Um, we have team fundraising, which is pretty much all of your individual kind of peer to peer fundraiser um, campaigns can then be added to a team. So you can say, hey, our board wants to fundraise for us. You can create a team fundraiser for them. Um, which is really nice because then you also have kind of some gamification happening. You can have um, a leaderboard showing how the board members are doing. It's a nice way to really amplify your campaign. Um, uh, and then that was super quick. If anyone has any questions they want, we also have an awesome support team available. So if you need help setting up your peer to peer fundraiser pages or your team fundraisers, or if you just want to know more, um, you can reach out to them by email or you can call them. Oh, I'm looking at our, does anyone have any questions? It's quite quiet today. Um, no one's put any in the chat or the Q&A box. I think what we can do is we can move on to the next segment. But again, if you have any questions, please keep sending them. We'll still have a Q&A at the very end um, for, with everyone on, on screen. So we'll be able to answer all the different questions you might have, whether it's for the platform, some ideas for your um, campaign, or just the campaign details in itself. Um, I will move on. This is the part where, again, this is all for you. So we're hoping that we can share some ideas that you can take away and use for your campaign this year. I'm gonna ask to bring back Audrey, Samara, and Pearl. Um, they'll be sharing their experiences, some tips from their experiences for the campaign. Um, thank you so much to the three of you for joining us today. Uh, I just, okay, there's Pearl. Um, and then, I, sorry, excuse me, I just lost my train of thought there. Um, we're so happy to have you join us. And the one thing, reason why we invited you is because your organizations had a really strong outreach last year. And I wanted to start with Audrey because Coalition of Asian American Leaders had a great social media presence throughout the entire month. How did you decide your content and then the frequency? Sure, thanks, Payon. Hi everyone, I'm Audrey Cha, she, her pronouns. Um, as Payon said, I work at the Coalition of Asian American Leaders, otherwise known as CAL, and I am the development associate there. Um, and that's a great question. So how we decided on our content and then also frequency. Um, I think from the get-go, we knew that we wanted to have our given May fundraiser be, I guess, social media forward. Um, and so how we thought about it was we wanted to play around with the same colors um, that the logo had. And then also because May is in spring, we also wanted it to be fun and bright and then fresh. Um, and so if you guys look back at our social media posts, you'll see like these very spring-like colors. So like blues and then obviously the reds and then the yellows and oranges. Um, and so that's how we decided on how we were gonna create the content. Um, so our frequency, so our, um, I think our campaign last year was the entire month of May. And so how we, so me and our um, communications manager decided how we wanted to do this was every week we'll roll out two to three messages about our given May fundraiser. Um, and I also had the idea that it'd be really cool for our um, followers to see what our scale is. So one of the posts every week was, we've reached 20% of our goal, um, help us, get reach like 150 donors so yeah our goal was to reach 150 donors so not so much monetarily um and then the messaging behind that was like anybody can donate whatever your contribution is a dollar to a thousand dollars will help us reach a more just and joyful future um so yeah that's kind of how we decided it and then really just planning it out on a google doc <laughs> was helpful as well so yeah 
That's actually a really good tip is just planning out a schedule. It's a lot easier when you can see the month ahead of you and then mark the dates that you're like, oh, we should send this out. So it doesn't conflict because we know a lot of people hold events in May as well. So, so you're not conflicting with your other programs. Um, as a separate question, because you were able to create your own content, was there anything on our end besides the logo that would have been useful so you could build your like social media graphics? That's a great question. I actually don't know if I have, I don't, I don't think so. No, <laughs> I think a lot of it was just also how we wanted to frame it was like, we wanted to still keep intact with our Cal branding, um, but not necessarily use our colors, which is like purple. Um, it's a very much in line with like our South, it, I guess, yeah, Southeastern um, colors that we see. So like it's purples, pinks, um, green, and so we wanted to really stand out by using the colors on that logo and then also using that logo and the hashtags that you've mentioned earlier as well to get more traction. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we would have needed to do to be successful <laughs> with what we did, but yeah. <laughs> And for folks who don't know, we, I always mention the shareables folder, but besides the logos, we actually put other, like if you don't have time to create a graphic design or something just to say, given me, we create a lot of different images for you that you can use. If there's something that you need where, where you would prefer to have some empty space on the bottom so you can put your logo, please let us know. And then we can try to provide something for that so everyone can use that. So that's the shared folder with all the images. We have stuff for Instagram for, um, Instagram stories and also like your profile banner if you wanted to change it out for the month. Um, thanks, Audrey. I'm going to move on to Samara because Womankind was one of the few organizations that actually was able to secure a matching donation. How did you start that conversation? How did you build that partnership? Uh, thank you so much for that question. It's a good question. Um, also, it reminds me that it's been a year <laughs> and time is going by so fast. Um, so I'll, I'll start off with an introduction. My name is Samara Mian. Um, my pronouns are she and hers, and I'm the development manager at Womankind. Um, I'll start off by saying and extending my gratitude to all of you, the Asian Pacific Fund, the a a AAPI Data Hub, uh, and all the other organizers of the campaign. Um, doing this for three years in a row and doing it in response to what was happening in 2020 and what's continuing to happen, it is really a show of our collective, like, like the collective movement to organize together and build together. And I think that's really strong and powerful. Um, I'll share a little bit about Womankind and my role. We are a New York City uh, based nonprofit. Um, we use the multidimensionality of our Asian heritage to work alongside survivors on their path to healing. And so this includes doing services like emergency residences or shelters, um, providing trauma-informed counseling, having a 24-7 helpline, and um, having well, so many things, wellness groups, empowering groups. Um, and we do this, do this in 18 plus Asian languages as well as Spanish. And so my role as the development manager is primarily in individual giving. And so I have been spearheading our Given May campaign for the last two years and hopefully this year as well. And I'll jump into the question now. So when we were trying to secure the donation match, we actually did not plan to do it. So halfway through May, we realized that like we were being successful, people were donating, the campaign was going the way we wanted it to go when it came to content, but we weren't getting the same engagement that we wanted. And like it was slowly starting to dip down the donations. And so our team came together. I have a lovely team of um, our chief development officer and our communications manager. And we usually do these campaigns together. And so we came together and we were like, okay, so what's happening and really what can we do to reinvigorate the campaign? And one of the strategies was, okay, let's secure a matching donation, which is super ambitious because we're in it already. <laughs> um, and so we were like, okay, so how do we do that with like the easiest way, which obviously was our board. Um, and so we did not send out like a mass email to all of our board members, just because I think no one would have responded if we did that. Um, instead, we were like, okay, so our criteria would be, we want someone who has the means to give right now, someone who has a social media presence and is comfortable and someone who's willing to respond so quickly because we would need an answer like right now. And so one of our board members, um, interestingly, also has a jewelry brand. 
and has a very strong social media presence and is very used to like posting. And so we reached out to them and very explicitly were like, okay, so we would love to secure a matching donation. Do you have the means to do this? Um, most of our board members donate for a gala. So this was an additional ask really. And so they were super hyped, very excited about it. I think they wanted to contribute because of what was going on in just the world and what has been happening. And so they said yes, because we wanted it to be trauma informed. We gave them like, we did not mention an amount. We let them choose the amount wanted to do. And even in the wording of our ask, we gave them a full out. We didn't want to put that sort of pressure on someone. Um, and so they said yes, which is great. We crafted the language after that, got their approval, and then we blasted it everywhere. The e-blast, the social media post on our website. What was great was that they are so used to doing this themselves. It was on their website as well. It was on their social media as well. And so... It worked out well for us at the end because we were able to meet our goal, our aspirational goal, um, and get a lot of engagement. And so for us, success wasn't just just the donation amount. But we were able to achieve the spectrum of what we wanted to do with that campaign. And so we engage people across. Um, I think I'll conclude with saying that if I could go back, I would definitely plan it out a little bit more. <laughs> I would attend workshops like this. Like I would think about it a little bit more and be a little bit more thoughtful about it and hopefully increase the amount because we ended up doing 3000 and I would have preferred that we push it a little bit more. Um, yeah, so that's a brief story about how we were able to secure a donation. Thanks, and you actually hit on something that I think Audrey said too, is sometimes the goals that you're set might not be monetary. It could literally just be, we wanna bring in new donors or reactivate maybe donors who haven't given in a while. Um, so that's actually quite important too. As a little bit of an extra, one of the Give and May Awards will be, it's not just monetary, sometimes it's the number of unique donors. So that's another way that you can bring folks in that maybe it's not the number of, in terms of amount, but more people coming in. So that's a great way. That's one of the reasons why we want to hold this campaign as well, because it gets your name back out there. People, one more way for people to kind of get involved and see the work that you do. So that's really important. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to move to Pearl. We know that Northeast Medical Services works with a community where English is their second language. Do you have any tips of how to reach this audience and even explain what the whole um, campaign is about? Hi everyone, my name is Pearl. I'm with Northeast Medical Services or NEMS. Uh, we're located in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and so as Payan mentioned, we work with a predominantly um, immigrant patient population. Uh, we serve about 67,000 patients per year and about 80% pre prefer to be served in a language other than English. Um, a majority of those um, do speak Chinese. Um, so our given May audience included staff, their friends and family, patients, and also people that were unfamiliar with NEMS. Um, so there were different strategies and approaches to reach each category. Um, when we do outreach to patients or um, people who are unfamiliar with NEMS, we try to make sure to have bilingual materials in at least Chinese, and then we try to make things as simple and easy to understand as possible. So the flyer can't be too cluttered, you know, it can't have um, English and Chinese sometimes because then you have too much information on one page. So if possible, we would have like one English flyer and then one Chinese flyer. Um, we also try to reach them where they're at. So for example, for social media, um, Chinese, Chinese users usually prefer WeChat or Facebook and they're not usually on Instagram or Twitter. So knowing that we try to um, reach the patients or donors um, using those platforms that they're already using. Um, also, one of the things that we discovered last year was that there is no translation of Give in May because it is <laughs> a new thing. So we worked with Asian Pacific Fund to, you know, we came up with some ideas and, you know, got their feedback and, we worked with our staff to make sure that it made sense, you know, given May and that it was um, culturally relevant and people would understand what it was since it is a new concept. Um, and then lastly, like I mentioned, we did create bilingual flyers, which were posted in our clinic waiting rooms, um, also on our social media. Um, in addition to the flyers, we also created like 
um, like a sticker, um, other collateral, like thank you cards. Um, so we usually, we I really appreciate um, Asian Pacific Fund for creating all those templates and we built off of those templates and kind of put our own spin using the red, orange colors and adding our logo. So that was, um, that was really nice. I, I'm really happy with the materials that we were able to create. Um, so yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was, that was mainly it. Thanks for hitting, you actually touched on something that I think Samir also mentioned too, which is like, because our own audiences are quite segmented and they kind of look at different things. Some people really like reading an e-newsletter, whereas some people are super social media, social media savvy, but you have to pick which platforms. I think it's knowing that there might not be one blanket outreach where you send one message and hope everyone sees it. You kind of have to think through how do, if this is my target audience, what's the best way to get to them? So I'm glad that you touched on that. Um, I think I have a final question. Samira kind of touched on this already too, is what were some ideas that you did that didn't quite work or maybe something you would adjust to prepare for this year? Um, and Samira, you had said maybe thinking about it a little bit earlier, but was there anything else that would be a good tip for maybe some of the folks on this call? Yeah, I actually have one. Um, so this year, uh, we're thinking, so, well, let's start with last year, a lot of our messaging was about urgency. And so we really wanted to make it feel warm and inviting, but also like today's the day that you have to donate. Um, but obviously in a night, nice, like said nicely. Um, and so I think with the month long uh, campaign that we had last year, we realized that urgency has to be done within like a smaller time frame, And so I think this year we're actually going to, we're planning on either doing a, a one or two day campaign rather than a whole month long campaign. So something that's, <laughs> I guess, yeah. So my, I guess advice would be if you're thinking about creating urgent messaging or providing some sense of urgency, um, it should really just <laughs> be urgent, I guess. Yeah. So that's my one tip. That's actually a really good tip. I and we we've said this before, but Given May is modeled off of Giving Tuesday, which is literally just the one day. So it's a lot easier to message saying we only have 12 hours left. You have to give now. It's a lot harder when you're stretching it across an entire month and be like, well, I guess I have 20 more days that I can give. Um, so I think that's actually a good tip. If you don't have the capacity or the bandwidth, which we know everyone's super busy, maybe it is that you only do a one week challenge and, or a one weekend challenge. Um, so that's actually good. We just do it for the whole month because of API Heritage Month. But also if you didn't have the time, you could slowly like roll out whatever plan you had. So that's a really good tip, thanks. Um, I don't know if Pearl's here, I'm going to say. I can go next because I think mine is a little tied to that. Um, I would reiterate planning ahead, like way ahead if you, like, if you don't have the capacity to do it immediately. Um, so the one thing I'll say is that if you're going to be working with like, your programmatic staff, like the direct services folks, like they definitely do need, at least where I come from, a little bit more time just because there's so much to play as well. So like if you can do months in advance, well, I'll like put the seeds down like, hey, we're going to reach out to you for stories or just other other forms of support. Um, and then I think the other thing I'll say, and maybe this is reiterating, is that whatever like I've shared here, it's it's predicated on the capacity of the folks that I work with and comes from a, a lot of privilege of having like a team that has different talents and skills. And so I would encourage people to do it based on their capacity and not to like really destroy yourselves. Um, it's again, been a hard like couple of years. And if the majority of the people here are Asian, it's been a particularly difficult time. And so I would say like, have like a realistic goal and an aspirational goal. And like the process of creating these sort of campaigns are supposed to be in my mind, fun and creative. And of course you want to donate, like you want people to donate, you want, you want to fundraise. But I, I'll end by saying like, I hope we can all just be a little bit more gentle with ourselves and kind of approach this with like, like we're gonna learn, we'll, we'll be creative, we'll do this in a fun and like kind way. Thank you, Samir, for saying that. Actually, it's very true because I'm sure a lot of us are very worn out. We're just burning candle on both ends. So this is supposed to be fun and just try to keep that in mind as you're preparing for your campaign. 
Um, Pearl, I don't know if you wanted to add to that. Uh, yeah, I think that's a really good point because um, even though NEMS has been operating for like 50 years, this was actually one of the first few times we've done any fundraising at all. <laughs> and so we were, we didn't have high expectations and we were, you know, really just doing it for fun um, and seeing what we could get and, you know, exploring this option. Um, so I think for what we learned from last year is that we would definitely want to start earlier, planning earlier and reach out to more people that, you know, we don't really reach out to on a normal basis. So um, with the COVID, with COVID last year, I think it would be great if we could reach out to people that donated PPE um, during the pandemic and maybe we could, you know, reach them again. Um, you know, we're actually doing fundraiser this year. So that's another point for them to give again. Um, and also, because we were new to fundraising, we decided that we wanted to provide some incentives to donors. So we created like donation tiers based on the number or the amount that was being donated. We would give like a sticker or um, like masks, um, NEMS branded mask or some, some other types of incentives like bags and stuff. So um, we're gonna explore if we should continue this model or whether like incentives are necessary or not. Because um, while it's great to get our name out there using all these branded materials, it, it does cost money. So um, it did take away from some of the donations. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. It's kind of repeating what Samira also said too, is like there's the realistic goal with your capacity, your budget, and then there's the aspirational, like if something opens up for you, that'd be great. We can hit that goal too. Um, I'm actually gonna open it up to the larger Q and A because I do know that there are a couple questions that came through. If I can ask Sarah to join us again. Um, so someone had asked, quick, ooh, I just lost a question. Uh, Pearl, there's a question for you. Uh, would you be comfortable sharing your Given May translation if you didn't intend it to be unique to your organization? Um, do we know, I, I don't know if anyone, I haven't seen any other organizations, but they asked if anyone else has had translated material specific for Given May. Um, if Pearl, if you're willing to share that, I can also share it with the whole group. Yeah, definitely. I can send Peyton the translation of Given May and she can share it with everyone. And then I will, and just so in case you haven't checked it out, there is a communications toolkit with messaging um, ideas that you could use for social media, for your emails, and then like I said, for shareables. So I can drop it into that folder. So then you'll be able to see, um, you can use that. Thank you so much, Pearl. Um, uh, someone had asked, would it be possible for the panelists to share their original goal and what their final results were? So uh, maybe Audrey, if you don't. Sorry. Yeah, I can go first. Um, so our our original goal last year was to reach 150 donors. We reached, I think our final result was, oh, let me see. I know I have it pulled up. I think I have it pulled up. Um, I think we reached 56% of our goal. So whatever number that is, I think we were, around a hundred. So we almost reached our goal, but we didn't. Um, and I don't remember how much we raised either, but the monetary number wasn't <laughs> important to us. It was just more, we wanna reach more donors, um, give this opportunity for our lapsed donors or um, recurring donors to donate to us during given May. So it was still successful overall. It's <laughs> uh, a quick, a follow-up, Audrey, uh, someone asked, was it 100 individual donors? Yes, 100 individual donors. And then Samir, what was, I think you, you talked about it, but what was your original goal and the outcome? Um, so I'm always very conservative with our realistic goals, um, just because it's way nicer at the end when you reach it. It feels good. Um, so ours was around, 7,500 to 10K, um, and I, I do a range on purpose. Um, we did not have a number of donors as our goal, which this year we will be, um, but at the end, we ended up raising more than $20,000, I think it was around 22 maybe, 
and around 70 to 80 donors. Um, and so uh, hopefully this year we'll be able to meet somewhere in the middle and do it again. Um, so like I said, because we've never done this before, we just threw a number out there in honor of our 50th anniversary, we made a goal of $50,000. But we obviously didn't hit it, but um, we were still really happy with what we ended up with. You know, we had um, over 90 unique donors. And so we won the one of the awards for most number of unique donors. We won the $5,000 cash prize. Um, and then in total, we raised like almost $9,000. Um, so we were really happy with the results and, you know, we have no regrets. <laughs> but definitely this year, we'll probably do a smaller um, fundraising goal. Everyone, there's always growing pains, even us as the organizers, there's a lot of things that we're still learning, not just about the platform, but what will work better for all the participants. Um, so this is why we hold these webinars, because we know everyone has it's a wide range from super experienced to super new. Um, there is a question, Sarah, someone had asked, um, what is the pricing level for services? Do you mind touching on also, we, we talked about the URL signing in through the Give and May. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, okay, so first I'll talk about the, the fees. So I think you touched on it at the beginning, but basically, um, so when people make a donation, it'll be 3% this year for a platform fee, which is Mighty Cost Services. And then you have your kind of standard credit card. So 2.9% plus 30 cents on processing. If someone does want to, they can pay by bank account. So that would be, I'm looking at my notes, um, 1% fixed kind of fee. So it's 1% plus $1 fixed fee. Um, and then we cap it at $5. So if you have like a large donor who wants to pay instead of um, kind of acquiring a bunch of credit card fees, they can pay by bank account instead. Um, and then touching on the URL. Yes. So when you are coming to your organization page and you are ready to log in, you're going to want to go to the given May website. Um, and then at the very top right hand corner, you'll see a little kind of person icon. You'll click that. You can log in through the platform on that in, the, in that way. Um, and then it'll bring you to your organization profile page and you'll know you're in the right spot because you'll be logged in. And at the very top in the address bar for your website, um, it'll say givenmay.com slash your organization um, kind of URN that you've created your organization. Sarah, um, someone had mentioned about the primary. We will be sharing, like I mentioned, we're recording this webinar now, so we'll share the link to the video, but we'll also share the PowerPoint as well. Um, that'll be, I'll have a follow-up email with all that information. I don't know if we have any other questions. Everyone's so quiet. If you have any questions that suddenly pop into your mind later, please feel free to email it to giveinmay at asianpacificfund.org and we'll do our best to answer. Oh, sorry, we just had something come in. Um, Oh, okay. Thanks for the compliment, Adela. Um, so we will answer as much as we can um, and just send them all through any questions you have, even up to registration, post-registration, we're here to help you. And then if you have any platform questions, please send it to the Mighty Cost Support team. They're really quick to respond and they're really great. Um, with that, I want to thank our Give and May team, API Data, Mighty Cause. Thank you to our three speakers, Audrey, Samara, and Pearl, for joining us and sharing your wisdom around the campaign. Again, everyone, please don't forget to register. I know most of you who are on this call have done this before, so please register. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll send follow-up soon. Have a great day, everyone.